excited to be able to share this information with you all because you know a lot of people they have a desire to get better credit because better credit unlocks doors we all know that uh, better credit can help you get that house that you need can help you get a better vehicle can help you do a lot of different things but we're going to go ahead and get right on into it because we're going to share all of that with you. So we're going to help you go from low credit to high credit. Here's six reasons that you should have good credit. You know, so if you want uh, no or lower deposits, down payments, interest rates, become a homeowner, drive that nice car that you actually are able to uh, not have to worry about it breaking down the side of the road on you, right? To start a business, uh, that you're going to need funding to go with that. You know, maybe just to... Uh, get a new job or seek a promotion. We don't really understand that a lot of these high figure jobs, they're requiring you to have great credit uh, or you just need more money to invest uh, for your lifestyle to look more attractive. Actually, this is another big thing, especially when we're talking about people who are starting to make, uh, you know, the higher figures of money, they start to look for, uh, sp uh, they look for mates with good credit. Isn't that crazy? There's like a whole dating site where you can date people that only have good credit, <laughs> okay? But we need to understand what makes up your score. This right here is number one. You know, if you don't know what the, uh, let's say you're going to war, right? If you don't know the strengths and the weaknesses of the landscape that you're in, that you're going to be fighting in, you're going to be at a disadvantage. The enemy knows the terrain. They know the ups, the downs. They know where things get skinny. They know elevation. They know depth. They, you know, where they can sidetrack you, blindside you, uh, flank you, all kinds of things like that, right? Well, if you do not know the landscape of your credit score and what goes into your score, then you're going to get defeated every time. So we're going to look at the five categories that go into the FICO score. Uh, so you all, you start with the 300, all right? So that's the first thing you need to write down is I start with 300, all right? I start with 300. And then the first thing that they grade you on, the most important thing is payment history. That accounts for 35% of your score or about 192 points. So the more that you pay on time, the better your score is going to be. If you have a total of uh, 12 possible payments. For example, if you had a credit card for an entire year, and that's the only thing on your credit report. If you had a credit card for an entire year, and that's the only thing on your credit report, well, guess what? That means that you have 12 payments that you needed to make on time. All right, 12 payments that you need to make on time. And if you get uh, you know, all payments made, then you get 192 points. All 192 points are now counting towards your credit score. Now, if you missed half of those, well, then now you have half of those points reporting to your credit score. That means, you know, it, and it's really hard to make up for those missed payments, but we have ways to really help you along with that. But that's why you cannot miss a payment because it's really hard to make up for, for it. Now we're talking about credit utilization. So you get another 30% or 165 points. So this is number two that you're writing down is credit utilization. That's 30% or 165 points. That means if that credit card had a um, $1,000 limit and you used all 1,000 of it, well, you lost all 165 points counting towards your credit uh, score. If you're using half, like 500 of that credit report, well, now you have half of these points that are now reporting to... Um, your score. All right. That's how you think of this. Now, credit age, um, this really doesn't like have a, a year where it gets like a certain point range. This is like a lot of the score is still kind of a mystery. So we're only able to do what we can witness and observe. And with credit age, all we can tell you is that the longer that you have accounts, the more points you're going to get. But I think that people that have, well, it said that the people that have like an 800 and an eight, like a perfect credit score, 850, they have 20 years or more of credit age. So this is, this means that you want to keep those credit cards open for, for a long time. That means you want to mix and which is the next thing, a credit mix. That means that you have installment loans, you have revolving loans, you have different types of credit on there. If you just have a credit card on there and that's it, well, you're missing 55 points because you don't have any, you don't have a mix of different kinds of credit. So you want a car loan, you want a mortgage loan, you want a, you know something that has installments on it as well. The only bad thing about installments is that eventually you pay it off. I mean, that's a good thing and a bad thing because you know it, it falls off your credit report. You know, you're not gonna have you know a car loan on there for 10 years. Okay, eventually you're gonna pay that off. <clears throat> so the last thing is new credit. 
So this is another 55 points. Okay, new credit, that's another 55 points. Now, where this comes in is inquiries. Okay, so every inquiry that you have will take your score down three to five points depending on how many you already have. Okay, and inquiries are whenever you go and you apply for a loan, they're tracking that because if you're, think about it, if you're a bank, if you have millions of dollars and you're going to lend the money out to some people, you want to know that, hey, this person just came from down the street, from you know this person, that person, this lender, that lender looking for money. And now they're at your doorstep looking for money. And it just basically overall hurts your, uh, it hurts the way that client looks to you, doesn't it? Right? So it just makes you look desperate when this is you and you're inquiring about getting a loan from a lot of places. So you wanna be smart about this and we have different tips for that, of course, but 300 plus 550 points, that equals a perfect 850 score. That's how you get an 850, y'all, all right? So now we're gonna cover some helpful tips, some strategies, our secret weapons, which has helped over 60,000 people improve their credit. But first let's tackle that payment history because we told you what it was. Now let's look at what you should do to make sure that you have a great payment history. So <laughs> pay on time, people, right? Uh, so your credit reports, they're going to reveal your payment history. Okay, we already uh, took a dive into that 35% of your score. Okay, so the best way to do this is paying your bills on time. By paying your bills late, you're going to start to ding your score. Okay, we looked at that. Now, the number one way to avoid this is to set up auto pay. That's number one. Set up the auto pay. OK, so you know what your bills are. And this is a whole uh, lesson on budgeting that we're going to be covering in a later class. So definitely stay tuned because we cover different things on these uh, master classes. Uh, that way, you know, if you want to keep tuning in so you can keep getting the information, you're going to get a little different edge each time. OK, because this, this stuff really isn't taught in schools. I know financial literacy is now being pushed in, in the major school systems, but for the most part, you know, we have to find these things out as we become adults. So setting up auto pay or calendar reminders so you don't miss due dates. You know, I remember when I first got started on my credit journey, this is what I exactly had to do. I had Google Calendar. Uh, you know, some other people have different kind of calendars that they use on their phone, but I put when that bill was due and I put a reminder five days in advance. So that way I had time to move money or whatever I needed to do. And I made sure that that account had the money in it and the auto pay was going to go through without having to worry about it. All right. So that's really, really key. Another tip is pay more than the minimum. So we're talking about credit cards here. OK, but we can also be talking about installment loans. Uh, so that minimum payment on your credit card, it keeps you paying that card forever. OK, if you understand the cost of interest, anytime you carry forward a balance, you're getting charged interest on that balance. And when you make that payment, it goes towards the interest. It doesn't go towards what you actually owe. It goes towards the interest first. That's why you're probably thinking like, man, I've been making payments on this thing for so long and the balance just ain't going down. What's happening? Well, all of your payments are going towards the interest. So whenever you pay more than a minimum, some people make two payments per month. So if your credit card bill is $100, then now you want to pay... Um, I would say not, if you can make two $100 payments, then make two $100 payments. If not, then you want to kind of split that up into two $75 payments. Instead of just one $100 payment, uh, maybe you don't want to make one $150 payment, which would be more than the minimum, but maybe you just break it up to make a $75 payment and another $75 payment. Okay, so pay whatever it is, pay 75% of your uh, minimum uh, payment, pay 75% of it two times a month. And that way you're actually paying a, a, you know, a little bit extra. You're paying 50 cent, 50% 50 extra every time you can pay a bill. But another good thing about paying two times a month is it kills the interest because you just said, Hey, I, I wasn't borrowing that money for this part of the month. So you can't charge me for the money that I didn't borrow the money that I already paid back. So it's just another smart way to think about it. But with credit, Hey, they get the benefit, you lose the money if you carry a balance forward. Credit utilization. The tip here is don't max it all out, all right? You got $1,000 on that credit card, you better act like you only have 200, okay? You better act like you only have $300 on there. So experts recommend using no more than 30% of your available credit. Keep your utilization low. We have 
uh, tracking tools to help you kind of see where your utilization is at any given moment. So that's going to help you out when we get there. And credit history. <laughs> this one is a tough one. All right. So you want to build accounts for longevity. Okay, so the length of the time that you had the credit is what goes into determining your credit history. So if you're getting these store cards that you're not really going to use for a long time, um, you know, these like gift cards, uh, not gift cards, but these novelty shops, maybe uh, like in our household, we have uh, children's place cards, right? We're not going to use that after our youngest, you know, gets past or gets into high school. So now we have this children's place card that we're not going to use. You know, it's just, it wasn't really a long-term plan for that. But if we close that account, that's going to now report as a closed account on our credits. Now we got to just keep it open. Now, if they were charging an annual fee, well, guess what? Now we're kind of trapped into keeping this thing around just not to hurt our credit. So you want to think long-term and you want to try to avoid some of these store cars that report on your credit. Okay. So that's a good way to keep your credit history up and also becoming an authorized user on an old account. So maybe your parents have an account that you can just hop on as an authorized user, just let them know, hey, I don't even want the card, you know, just put me on as an authorized user and make sure you pay the bill, <laughs> okay? Because their payment history now becomes your payment history. So make sure they have been paying on time and they don't have a maxed out uh, uh, utilization as well. Okay. Cause that's going to look like it's yours. Okay. So do your homework on them before you just hire them or recruit them to be an authorized user for you. An authorized user just means that, you know, you've put, or they have put your name on that card as someone that can use it. So now it reports on your credit report. So I wanted to explain that too, in case somebody didn't exactly know, but it looks like we got some more part of uh, some more people that jumped on in. What's up? Money mellows in the building. Okay. Uh, Carmen's in the building. What's going on? All right. Thanks so much for coming on out. So now we're talking about credit mix. We're talking about building accounts for longevity. Okay. Wait, we already built the account for longevity. So now what we're doing, we're mixing it up. We having different things on these credit reports. So like I mentioned earlier, you want to have that installment loan. If you just have a car note, but no credit card, guess what? You ain't, you're not building credit. You got to also get that credit card. You know, and a lot of people, they, they come to me and they say, Jerry, I just can't get approved for a credit card. What can I do? Well, you can start with an unsecured car. Okay. Unsecured car is really easy. Okay. So you're basically going to take money from your paycheck here. All right. And you're going to go and you're going to put it on an unsecured card or excuse me, a secured card with your bank. I don't know if I said unsecured. Unsecured card is a regular card, but the secured cards are the ones that you just preload. Okay. And now it's reporting um, to your credit um, to your uh, credit report. Now, here's one thing about that. Before you even open up a secure card, you want to ask the lender or the provider, the issuer of that card, can I graduate this card to an unsecured card at some point in the future? Key, because once you, a lot of banks, a lot of places, you get that unsecured card. I mean, you get a secured card, it is secured forever, okay? You don't ever get your money back. And it's just a, it just acts as a secure card on your report. And you never get to graduate to an unsecured card, which is just a regular card. But there, a lot of banks do have that program, but you just have to ask in advance. Some banks don't. Okay, so write that tip down. Get a, get a secured credit card that graduates to an unsecured card. I know Navy Federal has a program like that. A lot of credit unions will have a program like that. Um, but there's a lot of other different cards that you can get. Just ask your inviter. They're going to give you a whole list of different things that you can get. But that's it for credit mix, y'all. So and the last thing that we're talking about now is that new credit. Okay, watch now for these inquiries. Nobody likes inquiries, y'all. Nobody that like every time you look at your report and you see an inquiry on there, you should be like, hmm, that's like kind of like getting your homework back and you got docked because you didn't put your name at the top. It's, it's that kind of, oh, why am I getting dinged for this? Ah, oh, so crazy. So to avoid this, you want to avoid giving out your social on applications. I know people that they just feel so confident with their social. They put it on everything. You know, then we have some people that won't put their social on nothing. You know, they won't even put their social on a mortgage application, <laughs> you know. But to avoid the inquiries, you want to make sure you just keep your social off of different applications. Online, you want to express that, hey, 
when you ask, hey, is this going to cause a hard inquiry if they require you to have that social? Is this going to uh, pull my credit report? Is this going to be a hard inquiry or a soft inquiry? And here's the difference. A hard inquiry is talking about loans. Anytime you're about to get money, that's a hard inquiry. And that is what actually brings your score down three to five times each time. A soft inquiry is companies that are just verifying your identity or maybe they just want to pull your score Right. So they're not going to look at your full report. They just want to look at your score um, and they want to verify like utility companies. They might pull your score. A phone company might do a soft inquiry just to verify you are who you say you are. Uh, they might also pull your score, too. I know like Verizon, you have to have a certain score to even qualify to get an account with them. There's different things like that, but it's not going to show up as a hard inquiry because they're not giving you money. So really, really important. And these hard inquiries will last on your credit report. The effects can be felt for two to three years even though they last for a full seven years, all right? But once it gets past that two to three year mark, many people don't care, many lenders don't care. So now we're gonna talk about uh, MindNovay Disputes Manager. This right here is the future of credit, the new way, because that was a lot of things to keep track of. And especially if you have negative items, you can have late payments that are reporting on your credit report that are not accurate. You can have utilization. Someone says that you've maxed out your card and they're not updating it, after, even after you've paid it down, or maybe even saying that account is still open, or that account's not even in your name. Uh, you asked to be released from being an authorized user, and they're still reporting you as, you know, on that card. Um, and when it comes into, like, credit mix and having different kinds of accounts, maybe, you know, one of these accounts that's reporting is just not yours, or it's in collections. Um, when it comes to credit age, maybe you have a new account that has a, the wrong date on it that's reporting different, so it's not giving you the maximum benefit. There's so many errors that can occur on your credit report. They say 80% of credit reports have errors on them that are costing their, uh, the, the profile, uh, the person that um, that profile belongs to is costing them up to 30, from 30 to 50 points um, per person. That's crazy. Why do you have errors on your credit report? You know how to build a solid report. Why are you gonna let errors kind of hold you down, okay? And then when you go to get your credit fixed, listen, you got these companies, they want to charge you an arm and a leg, and it feels like a whole nother bill when it's like, look, I can take this money and just pay my bills with it and, and raise my credit score that way, right? So what is the solution? Well, this right here is my Nova Disputes Manager. Uh, we really, really enjoy being able to help people with this particular product because you can dispute any account on all three bureaus. You can do it all at the same time. It uses AI technology to automatically import all three of your credit, um, all three credit reports from the three bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. So it's gonna go ahead and connect to those three providers, pull in your reports without the hard inquiry, because here's the difference. When a company pulls your report, that's where the inquiry comes in. When you pull your report, there's no inquiry, all right? So this AI, AI technology, it knows which account is hurting your credit, and it creates the dispute letter to challenge it, okay? So you don't have to guess what is negative and what is not, right? I just gave you a whole bunch of different scenarios. Um, everybody can pretty much agree that a repossession will be a negative item, right? But do you know that that student loan because it has 13 years reporting on your credit and you only missed one payment, that's probably not something that you should dispute. Do you know that that inquiry that's actually attached to an account right now to a credit card that you're using right now should not be disputed? Because if you dispute that inquiry, that usually means, hey, there was an error. I didn't ask for this. And that usually means that there's fraud being involved, right? So what they'll do is they'll remove that inquiry, but also close your account. So this knows exactly what to do, and it gives you different warnings, gives you different suggestions as you go along there, and it generates the report for you. So now you have three sets of letters that you can mail to the credit bureaus. It gives you the address to mail. It even has a section where you can put in your, your uh, ID and your proof of address, which is another thing that the credit bureaus recommend. So it compiles all of that. All you got to do is upload your ID and upload your proof of address, and it automatically puts them at the end of those letters. All right, and you can do this unlimited times. There's no limit on the letters that you can send. Now, some credit repair agencies, you go to them and you're like, and they'll tell you, hey, we can only dispute five things at a time. Or I've seen agencies only dispute one thing at a time. What good is that? <laughs> you're never gonna get anything done because the process has to go through a mail. 
Okay, the Fair Credit Reporting Act was drafted in the 1970s, y'all. And it basically allows for paper disputes. It was written for paper disputes. So you got to do it through the mail. Some people fax it in, right? Not everybody has a fax machine. Everybody can get a stamp, okay? So these credit repair companies, they say, oh, we can only do one letter at a time. or only uh, five things at a time. We can only dispute with one bureau at a time. Now you can do all of them. And there's no such thing as what we what they used to call frivolous uh, disputing, where you might have 20 items on your report that need to be disputed. You dispute all 20 items, okay? That's a myth that says if you dispute more than five things, they'll say it's frivolous. Because I got a newsflash for you. You can dispute one thing, and they'll say it's, fr it's frivolous, okay? So it doesn't matter. But now you have a paper trail that you're sending these disputes, and now we have things that we can do. So it's very professional. These letters are effective. Let me give you another tip on these letters. They're drafted with machine learning. Mm, what does that mean, Jerry? Machine learning? Well, because this letter worked for Sue and it looked and it got deleted the following month because the AI technology, it connects again next month to see what got deleted. Since it got deleted, the machine says, hmm, I'm going to remember that for next time. When Bill comes along and he has the same account with that same uh, or, or a similar account with that same provider, that's reporting late around this time, this worked for Sue, I'm going to use it for Bill. So now this machine is collecting data into the cloud, right? And it's all encrypted. So don't worry that your information is floating out there somewhere. It's all ones and zeros. It doesn't even keep your name or anything like that. It just keeps algorithms. So it uses this whole like binary code to analyze your report, what works for your report. It matches you up with somebody else has a similar report. What worked for them now works for you. The more it works for them, the more it works for you. The more people that we help serve, the faster the system is going to be for the next person. Okay, isn't that wonderful? That's great. You know, we're in this new technology age where we have AI self-driving cars. You know, when you're in your plane, the only time the pilot's really touching the controls is to take off and land. All the rest is by computer. So now we have AI to help fix your credit. I love it. Okay, and it makes it more affordable too because now you don't have a person using their eyes to go in here uh, and scan, so you're not paying for that. And when a person uses their eyes to go in here and scan for items, sometimes they miss something because we're not perfect, all right? So, and then it tracks your results. It's awesome. To get started, just ask the person that got you on uh, for uh, the MyNova disputes and they'll be able to help you with that. But I wanted to spend a lot of time with that because people usually have a, a big question about that. And they have questions about how do I get a better credit score? You know, and this kind of technology can help you do that. Now, MyNova credit monitoring is another thing. It's automatically included with MyNova disputes. Now, this right here is a $29 value that we throw in with MyNova disputes because some credit repair places, you go to them and they're actually say, okay, well, now you got to go out and get credit monitoring. Now you got to go out and get identity IQ or you know, credit score for free, credit, credit score for me. And it's like a free trial for seven days and they start charging you seven or $30 a month. And then you try to cancel with them and it's impossible to cancel. Now you, it's just, it's just, it's madness. So we said, let's just throw that out. Let's include our very own credit monitoring uh, software suite to help people build track and boost their credit score. And uh, you get all these different things included. So it's, it includes the MyNova credit monitoring, the score tracker, score builder, score boost, which I'm going to show you in just a little bit because my favorite part of it, money manager, a million dollar fraud insurance policy, three bureau credit score reports, daily text monitoring. It also has something called a privacy scanner, which is really cool. It's probably one of our most underrated features with this because your information is out there on the web. I don't know if you have Googled yourself lately, but your address is probably going to pop up. Okay, it's kind of scary, especially if you have a family, especially if you are, you know, someone that's kind of an influencer or famous or a business person or a doctor, lawyer, anyone that works with the public. Listen, your information is probably out there right now. This little thing right here has a button you click. It scans for the very common public databases and you click the button to each one that you want to have uh, your information removed from it. I think mine, it was like 13 different sites that I just clicked one time and I chose which ones I want to remove. Next thing you know, I'm getting emails after email, back to back to back, just saying, hey, we've removed your information. We removed your information from each one of these sources. So that's another thing that this right here has because we understand that credit monitoring is a 
holistic thing. You can't just look at one report. You can't just look at one kind of report. You had to look at the entire picture and we give you that full thing. Let me break down score boost for you really quickly because this right here is going to immediately help you get better credit because it helps you look at your utilization. So as you can see right here, this little slider uh, on this screen, okay, right here in the middle, it says plus 44. I don't know if you can see it right below where it says total spending and total payment. It says plus 44. That right there means that when this person makes $2,800 in payments towards their credit cards, they can expect 44 points of improvement. So now you have a game plan because maybe you're about to spend that 2,800, um, you know, on a shopping spree. <laughs> Don't do that. Pay your credit card off first. All right. And then use that money to go on a shopping spree. Okay. No, don't do that. No, but seriously. <laughs> this right here is going to help you get the mindset that you need. So now every time you swipe, you can start to think, hey, my score is going to go down by X, Y, and Z. You can drag it the other way. If you need to plan, like let's say you need to buy airplane tickets like we need to do next month. We can slide that thing down by $400, $500. And it will tell us, hey, your credit score is going to go down by this much. So this right here is the fastest way to boost your credit score is actually improving your utilization by paying down your credit cards. But as you can see, it'll have all the different, you see it says Chase, Capital One, Wells Fargo, and the amount that you owe for each one. And it helps you pay them off in the best order. Okay, so that's key. I don't care how much credit repair you do. Okay, if you're maxing out your cards, you're not going to get an 800 credit score. You might not even get this to the 700 club. Okay. But this company is amazing, everybody. I just want to thank you for being here. You know, we are here to help. So get back in touch with the person that got you on and just ask the questions that you have. Matter of fact, if you have a question now, you know, we'll have a small section. Well, this is the small section where you can go ahead and come off mute or put it in the chat. If anything that you saw made you say, hmm, I got a question. Let's go ahead and get your questions answered. But other than that, you want to get back to the person that got you on because they know a little bit about credit that, uh, that can help you and get you along the right way. They can help you get access to that software, to the credit monitoring, and they can also help you come up with the next class. So I'll go ahead and take 10 seconds, see if anybody has a question. Going once. Mm -mm -mm. Going twice. All right, all right. I don't even know if my volume is up. So if, if, if I'm not hearing anybody, um, I'll see you in the chat. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and get out of here, everybody. Uh, our next master class is coming up. It's going to be April 1st because we're going to be out of town next week. We're going to be in the Windy City. Okay. We're going to be in the shy. Okay. Uh, you know, Wifey is doing an uh, amazing, amazing women empowerment event. I cannot wait to get down there and see. Um, Money Mellow says, can this tool help you get funded? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because one thing about your uh, credit report is that it's not just the score, but it's the overall report. Because sometimes you can have a great score, like maybe you have a 700 credit score, which is the bare minimum to get funding, but you have high utilization. So this tool can help you identify, hey, you need to bring down this card, you need to bring down that card, you need to bring down that card. But it can also help remove negative accounts. Because if you have a collection account, it doesn't matter either. They're still going to, you're still not going to get qualified. Okay, so you got to get rid of these collections. You got to get rid of these late payments and, and help boost your score to get you not only in the 700s, but also to have a, a good, what they call credit box or credit profile. So great, great question. This is absolutely essential. And it's such a great price. I definitely recommend it uh, other than, you know, spending, you know, hundreds of dollars with credit repair because this doesn't cost $100. Right. So I have a question. What if I, what if you got people that don't want to do it themselves? What, what other option do you have as far as if you don't yeah, want to do it? Absolutely. Yourself? What I would do is get back with your inviter and just say, hey, you know what? I saw that I can print out my own reports, but I want something else that's maybe done for you. And I bet you they have, I can guarantee you they have another solution for you. We covered that on the last masterclass. We, we do that. We, we do this so that we can have focus groups. Otherwise, these masterclasses are going to be like hours long with all the information that we had. Uh, but yeah, definitely get back in touch and just say, hey, I heard there's, I know that there's a do it yourself with AI technology, but you know, Jerry was talking about there's something else that, you know, y'all do it for me or something like that. And that's, that's what I need, you know, because I, 
I understand that I'm a busy person. You know, maybe you have a business owner or maybe you have like, you know, somebody who's just ripping and running all the time. They don't have time to mail stuff. We got solutions for them as well. Great question. Absolutely great question. All right, going twice. Anybody else? Okay, okay. Well, this was good, everybody. This was good. I'm excited for you. So April 1st, we're gonna do a home buyer's masterclass where we're gonna tackle uh, some of the best tips to buying a home, even if your credit is not where you want it to be. And we're gonna cover uh, some of that. So you definitely want to tell all your real estate friends, hey, get your prospects on April 1st. It's gonna be live, it's gonna be great. Then we're going to talk about how to beat credit card interest. Okay, we gave you a hint here, but we're actually going to give you some nice formulas. And then April 21st, we're going to talk about FICO versus Vantage, the differences and, and the uh, advantages of both, the history of both, just so you know you have a better overview of everything. All right. But hey, this was great, everybody. Thanks so much for coming on out. We're going to go ahead and see you all April 1st. Get back in touch with the person that got you on. And peace.